Hey guys, what's up? It's Iflin here, and welcome to episode 8 of my Warframe The Ultimate Beginner's Guide 2.0. In today's episode, we're going to be learning how you can get free Platinum, and by free, I mean you don't have to pay for it with IRL money. You still have to put in a little bit of work to get the Platinum, and also how you can get better mods to upgrade both your Warframes and your weapons even further. I just wanted to say a quick thank you for 289,000 subscribers. We are so close to that 300,000 goal. If we get hit that by the end of the month, it would mean the world to me. So thank you guys for helping me help you. So before we jump into the meat and potatoes of this video, let's first talk about all the things that I've leveled from level 0 to 230 to get myself all the way up to Master Rank 8. Everything that you can see on screen now that has like a little leaf symbol in the top right hand corner, that's something that I got from level 0 to 30. The Master Rank 7 test that I did was a very simple test. It's really similar to the Master Rank 1 and 2 test. The difference is that the enemies that you're going to be killing are a lot higher level and that you can use your Warframe abilities, right? So the game sort of expects you to have more mods equipped on both your weapons and your Warframes and then just use your abilities. That's pretty much it. As for the Master Rank 8 test, it's a parkour test where you have to shoot these little balls to generate a platform. It's a lot easier than it looks, trust me. It's really simple whenever you just get in and start playing. All you have to do is shoot this ball, jump on the platform, and then keep on doing that until you get to the end. It's really simple. In the last episode of the guide, I asked you guys to go out of your way to get a weapon known as the Redeemer. And that was kind of like your introduction to using uh, other weapons to create new weapons, right? So you had to get a Jolskana, you had to get a Vasto, and then you had to get the other resources that you needed to craft the Redeemer, plus the Redeemer blueprint from the market, to then craft the Redeemer so we can use it to kill a boss on Europa called the Raptor to get a Warframe known as Nova. I didn't show you guys how to actually kill the Raptor boss in the last episode because we didn't 110% have to do it, but I am going to show it in this episode simply because Nova is a must-have frame in my opinion because she makes a lot of the content in the game extremely easy. So on your Redeemer, you want to have Pressure Point, Fury, Fever Strike and Shocking Touch, that is pretty much all you're going to need and then you use your Excalibur Warframe, jump into the mission, use your Radial Blind ability whenever you're close to the Raptor and then use your Heavy Attack on the Redeemer to one shot the boss. Then you've got to pick up the little bomb that he drops and then drop it into one of the free portals that he's going to come out of. So you have to do that three times and then that is it. And you just keep on running this mission over and over and over again until you get the Nova Chassis Blueprint, the Nova Systems Blueprint and the Nova Neuroptics Blueprint, just like any other frame that we farmed up to this point. I want you guys to start crafting Nova as soon as possible. Like I said, she is such a great frame. She can speed up content and she trivializes content. She's really good and she's a must have, at least in my opinion. I also mentioned in the last video as well that if you had the resources to craft Rhino, you wanted to craft him and then claim him. That's because we're going to be doing this thing called uh, Corrupted Mod Farming. And to do so, you need to equip these four keys that is going to give you a pretty hefty debuff. Now, you don't necessarily have to equip all four keys. You can sort of spread the risk across other players, like doing this mission with other players. But I'm just assuming with this video that you're doing it solo. But before we jump into the intricacies of that, let's first figure out how we actually get these keys. So again, in the last video, I asked you guys to join a clan before you watch this video. If you're not in a clan, this is the thing that you're not going to be able to do. You're not going to be able to get these really good mods that I'm going to be asking you guys to go out and get before you watch the next episode of the guide. Once you've joined the clan, you're going to be able to craft a clan key in your foundry. You're going to have to do this before you can access the clan's dojo, which is where we need to go to buy these dragon keys. So if you join the clan that has got it shit together, you should be able to fast travel to your room called the Oricon Lab, right? And in this Oricon Lab, if you go up to the left hand console, you're going to be able to replicate the blueprint for the Extinguished Dragon Key, the Decaying Dragon Key, the Bleeding Dragon Key, and the Hobbled Dragon Key. Once you replicate this blueprint, they're going to be in your foundry as like a permanent blueprint. So it doesn't matter how many times you use this blueprint, like you're never going to have to go out of your way to buy it again. Right. So you can keep on using it and using it and using it. Um, what we want to do is craft as many of each key as possible. So for every bleeding that you craft, craft a hobbled, the cane and extinguished and keep on doing that until you have, I want to say, maybe five of each. 
And then what you want to do is you want to go to your in-game market and buy an orc and derelict capture key, an orc and derelict survival key, and an orc and derelict assassination key. So the orc and derelict is like this uh, void tile set, which is basically scrapped. A bunch of infested have taken over. And realistically, all that we're here for is farming these corrupted mods, a frame called Necros from a boss called Lephantis. We'll talk a little bit about that, uh, I want to say, in the next video. And then also we're going to need to the orc and derelict survival for a piece for a frame known as Octavia. So don't worry too much about the orc and derelict survival and the orc and derelict assassination for now. If you just get your hands on the orc and derelict capture key, you should be good to go. So just like with the dragon keys, you want to craft as many orc and derelict capture keys as possible because for every single orc and derelict capture mission that you do, you're going to get one really powerful mod called a corrupted mod. Every single corrupted mod that we're going for has an equal drop chance of 10%. So these runs are going to be quite annoying because we're farming for 10 different specific mods, but they all have an equal drop chance of 10%, right? So you might be doing run after run after run and never getting the thing that you want. So this is definitely one of the more frustrating areas of Warframe because these mods are 110% must have mods. It's just going to be a pain in the butt to get them. So the mods that we're going to be going for are called Blime Rage, Fleeting Expertise, Gnar Minded, Overextended, Transient Fortitude, Heavy Caliber, Foul Acceleration, Anemic Agility, Magnum Force, and Spoiled Strike. So the last four aren't as must have as the first six because the first six are mods that are going to affect the abilities of your Warframes, right? So your power strength, your power duration, your power efficiency, your power range, stuff like that. And then the last four are just for your weapons, like increased fire rate, increased damage. Uh, well, no, not increased damage, but increased fire rate basically. There is one for increased damage. Well, there's two for increased damage there, but uh, they're not as important because there are other mods within those sort of categories that are better than those in a lot of cases. It's just those last four mods are sort of like nice to haves that can buff you up in certain scenarios. So let's say, for example, you're using a beam weapon, right? And that would benefit from more fire rate. That's when you would use a mod such as file acceleration to uh, get more damage out your weapon or more dps out of your weapon right so don't worry too much about the last four that i listed just focus on those first six so to help you guys keep track of the mods that you've got like these essential mods those 10 mods i've made a spreadsheet which is going to be linked down in the description below that you can use to track how many of those mods that you've got and the reason that you're not just you know pressing yes or no have i got it or have i not is because you're going to also be farming up duplicates off these mods to sell them off to other players. Because it can be frustrating to actually get these mods to drop just by playing the game, then people actually go out of their way to spend the premium currency platinum on them. And I wouldn't blame you if you forked out a little bit of cash to get platinum just to buy these mods so you never have to play this activity again. So that's why these mods are sort of like in high demand and they go for an okay amount of platinum. So if you're the type of player who wants to start making platinum really early, then you can do so by, of course, farming up a bunch of these mods or the 10 mods that I just listed and then selling them off to other players. The spreadsheet that I have down in the description below is going to allow you to track how many duplicates of those mods you have. Of course, you can just use the end game modding section if you want to, but this spreadsheet that I have also doubles up for prime sets as well. When it comes to trading in Warframe, we're going to be using this website called Warframe.market. Basically, all you have to do is go to this website, warframe.market, create an account, sign up, and then link your Warframe account to uh, this website by going onto the forum and sending a message to their bot. Now, what you're going to be able to do on this website is put stuff up for sale by saying, hey, I've got uh, this mod right here called Blame Rage. I would like to sell this for 15 Platinum, for example. You've got the ability on this site to set yourself as online, offline, and online on game, right? So you can be online on the site, so you can be contacted through the site. You can be online in game, so people message you in game, which is the most common way of uh, encouraging these trades. And 
then of course if you're offline well then people just aren't going to bother message you or they can leave you like an inbox message on the site um what i would recommend doing is only setting yourself uh to online in game because people are more commonly going to message you in game rather than over the warframe.market website over my five or six years of playing warframe i've never received the message uh on this website i've only ever been messaged whenever i'm online in game and the reason being is because if you're online in game and you are one of the lowest uh, priced traders for a particular item then you're going to sort of like appear at the top of the list for that item whenever a person searches to buy it so you can use this website to both buy and sell in warframe and of course you can just like message people in warframe by going to your in-game chat and then typing in slash w and then putting a space typing in the player's name then another space and then typing the message so it's very important that you are as nice as possible whenever it comes to trading uh, in Warframe because there's a reputation system on the site as well, right? And, you know, the higher your reputation is, then the more likely people are going to be to uh, send you a message and, of course, you know, give a fair trade. Trading in Warframe takes place at a trading post found within your clan's dojo. So I'm just going to have footage on screen now of me looking at a trading post just to show you guys what it looks like because different clans are going to have their trading posts uh, positioned in different areas, right? And unfortunately, you can't fast travel to it. Usually, you'll just spawn right beside it. That's what a good clan will do. They'll just be like, okay, here, you spawn beside it. And whenever it comes to actually trading, uh, you can only trade a limited amount amount of times per day which is based on your master rank so if you are master rank seven you can trade seven times a day so on and so forth right so this is why i keep on trying to stress to you guys in videos that it's really important that you increase your master rank because the higher your master rank the more you can do the more you can earn right so in the case of trading the higher your master rank the more platinum you can earn in a day and the more platinum you have the more slots you have the more warframes you can play with and level and keep and see them for weapons and stuff like that all right so we got a little bit ahead of ourselves whenever it comes to that whole warframe.market talk let's first figure out how we go about farming these corrupted mods before we talk about selling them uh anymore so uh you go to your dojo you get your dragon key blueprints, you craft your dragon keys in your foundry, then you can go to your armory and equip them to your gear wheel. Once you've done that, you go, you get your orc and derelict capture key. So go to your navigation. Once you've crafted this key, look at the top right hand corner and you're going to see a orc and derelict ship. You press the ship and then you can choose the orc and derelict capture mission. In this orc and derelict capture mission, it's a regular mission, right? You have to go through, you've got to kill an enemy, you've got to capture him, pretty simple. But what's going to be different is the fact that there is going to be a corrupted vault that you can use one of the four keys that you have equipped to open it, right? And in there, there's going to be a statue of Excalibur Prime holding a little glowing ball. You pick up this ball, you go to the exit, and then once you've done that, you get your corrupted mod at the end of the mission. And then that is pretty much it. You have to repeat this process a ton of times until you get the 10 mods that I've listed in that spreadsheet. Uh, so then you have, you know, everything that you need to make your warframes and your weapons a little bit better. So like I said, this is probably one of the most frustrating parts of Warframe because it 110% is a necessity. If you don't get these mods, you're not going to be able to put together like really good builds for your Warframes, very specific builds for like specific pieces of content and specific play styles. So it's just something that you have to do. And it's one of the most annoying things in the game. So again, I wouldn't blame you if you went uh, to the market to buy platinum or prime access or something just so you could have the platinum to buy these mods off of other players and you can use the warframe.market website to find the best deal for whatever mod it is that you're trying to get and again you can use this website to trade these mods that you're farming up as well if you happen to have duplicates so you don't necessarily have to farm uh, or not farm you don't have to necessarily buy the platinum to buy these mods from other players Warframe.market should be pretty intuitive to use it is for all platforms and the place in order just go to the website down in the bottom right hand corner there's going to be a button that literally says 
place an order from there you're going to be able to put up uh you know the mod or the prime set that you want to sell and for what price so i suggest doing a little bit of research into the item that you're uh, looking to sell by just looking it up on this website before trying to put up an order for someone to come and buy it you know because you want to be able to undercut if you need the platinum really fast or play the long game uh, if you want to get like the appropriate amount of platinum for the mod or the set that you want to sell the thing is if you're trying to sell it for like the appropriate price it's probably going to take a little bit longer for people to start messaging you because you're going to have to um wait for the other people who sort of got to the site first to sell their item and take their listing down before you go near the top, right? So if you're somebody who, let's say, has a job and you can't spend all day logged into Warframe, you might want to start like undercutting in terms of like selling your mods or your prime sets for a little bit less than another person would if that makes sense but then if you're somebody who sits and you play the game all day every day like you're a teenager or something and you've got nothing better to do well then you know you can play the long game and of course put it up there for the appropriate price and get the appropriate amount of platinum so it's totally down to you uh, there's many other avenues that we can explore to make platinum uh, these are just the two examples that are probably going to be most accessible to you as a newer player uh, at this point in time right so later on we've got things like ribbon mods and you can also take things from your syndicates as well and sell those off to other players because keep in mind not every single player is going to have access to every single syndicate so they're going to want to buy some mods or some weapons uh, from a different syndicate that you might be a part of so keep that in mind going forward as well just make sure that when you are actually playing the game and you're trying to sell stuff on Warframe Nut Market, make sure that your status on the website is set to uh, online in game in the top right hand corner. Because, like I mentioned earlier, if it's not set to online in game, people aren't going to message you. I've never got a message on the website itself asking uh, for somebody to buy something from me. So if I'm not getting messages, you're probably not going to get messages on the site. So uh, just make sure to set yourself as online in game and then people will message you in game whenever they want to buy something. And also make sure that whenever you sell something, take your listing down because it's just kind of a dick move if you keep your listing up there because it's sort of like false advertising, right? You're saying that you have something whenever you don't actually have something. So you can put the quantity, how much you have up there as well. So make sure to change that too. If you have like five mods that you're trying to sell, so like five blind rage, if you sell one of them, take it down to four so that people know and uh, just make sure to be proactive with updating your status and the status of your inventory on the website, just like any good trader would. If anything, hopefully this communicates to you the importance of like, you know, just up in your master rank. So if you haven't already, make sure to go to the market and buy all the blueprints for every single weapon that you can and then level those weapons from zero to 30 because now you know how to make platinum, then like Warframe slots and weapon slots shouldn't be a problem. It's gonna be a lengthy process, 100%. But this is the type of game that you're playing. It's a grinding game. It's got an economy to it. You know, you just have to give it time. If, if you put the time in, you're going to get uh, a lot of enjoyment out of the game. That's how it goes. So with all of that out of the way, now we just have to complete the Uranus Junction. And to do that, we have to defeat the boss called Sargus Ruck at Tephys on Saturn. Now, this boss is a little bit difficult. I recommend bringing Rhino for this. I also recommend bringing Rhino for the Corrupted mod farming because like I mentioned, those Dragon Keys, they're gonna debuff you. So you're gonna have a lot less health and a lot less shields and stuff like that. So bringing Rhino and using his second ability, Iron Skin for both this and also that, if that makes sense, uh, is gonna benefit you greatly because Sargus Ruck is a boss who has flamethrowers. He deals a lot of damage in a very short period of time on top of that he has invulnerable stages right so he has to use his flamethrower to overheat it and then there's going to be a glowing blue bit on his body that you have to shoot so it goes uh, i think from arm to chest to back or it might be uh, arm to back to chest i think the first way is the right way around but i can't remember off the top of my head either way you just have to shoot the blue glowing spot on sargus rock to deal damage to him i recommend bringing the heck and i also recommend bringing the redeemer to take this boss down so you just use the heck with your damage mods and your elemental damage mods and then the same goes for the redeemer use your damage mod use your elemental damage mods and then you should be good to go just bring corrosive radiation if you're 
you're able to make either of the two and then that should be it it should be pretty easy from sargus rook you get the blueprints for parts for ember right so you get the neuroptics the chassis and the systems you don't necessarily have to go out of your way to get ember ember is basically a nuke frame and she's a pretty good one but the thing is we get an even better nuke frame on the next planet that being said the next frame is a lot more difficult to farm because there's a lot more parts to farm and the boss is also a little bit um stretched out i guess you could say so you can pick up ember if you want to as an aoe new cream or you can wait until the next episode to invest your resources in the next frame called equinox so that's who we're going to be getting next and Again, there's a lot to take in the next episode as well. So I hope you guys are ready for that. The next requirement is to open free Meso Void Relics. So you do this the same way that you open up the free Lift Void Relics, except you're using different relics this time. You're using Meso Relics. So the enemy levels are going to be a little bit higher, a little bit tougher mission, but uh, because you've got more mods and you've been upgrading your mods as you go along with Endo and whatnot, well, then this should be pretty much a cakewalk. Uh, we also have Craft a Weapon requiring Master Rank 1 or a high if you've been following along with this guide you should already have this done and then we also have craft an orc and derelict key from the market we've already done that in this episode so that was pretty easy the number one problem that you guys are probably gonna have with everything that i've told you to do in this episode is probably the lack thereof credits right so what you want to do is find a dark sector defense mission and then do five waves of that and then just extract and that's going to be how uh, we can farm credits more efficiently whenever we get to neptune though we're going to have an even better method of farming credits so if you jump into the next episode whenever you you know try your best to do as much as you can in this episode if you blitz through uranus like just get everything done in that video super quickly then move on to neptune you can like fill in the missing spots in this episode like let's say there's a mod that you didn't get from corrupted mod farming then you can go back and do that because you need a lot of credits to do corrupted mod farming you have to build those capture keys you've got to build the dragon keys and then on top of that like if you want to earn platinum you've got to be crafting weapons to uh, up your master rank so you can get more platinum within a day right so it's taking a lot of credits to get the blueprints taking a lot of credits to actually craft weapons so on and so forth and then you also need credits to do a lot of other things as well so this is probably like the number one issue that a lot of players run into is the lack of credits so as soon as you get the neptune things are going to get better because we can play a game we call the index where we invest credits we complete the mission and we come out with a ton of credits so um that's also why you want to pick up nova because she makes that really easy so uh with that being said the next thing that i want to talk about is nightmare missions nightmare missions are missions that have modifiers that are going to appear randomly on the star chart on planets where you've completed all of the nodes so basically just go to all of the planets that you visited thus far and then try to complete all of the nodes that you possibly can and then what's going to happen is a node is going to turn red that's going to be a nightmare mission and nightmare missions basically just have modifiers once you complete the mission at the end you're going to get a nightmare mod so i've got 13 nightmare mods that i want you guys to go out of your way to try and get so these are armored agility constitution vigor wildfire shred Blaze, Chilling Reload, Seeking Fury, Ice Storm, Lethal Torrent, Focus Energy, Drifting Contact, and Animal Instinct. Now, these mods don't sell for as much platinum as the Corrupted mods, simply because they're a lot easier to obtain and they're a lot less um, RNG reliant, simply because the missions are so easy. You don't have to, like, you know, craft keys and go through all of that rigmarole to get them. These are just some good mods that you want to pick up to enhance your warframe and your weapons a little bit more. So there's some elemental mods on there that will give you like, you know, reload speed buff. And for now, those mods are going to be good for giving you a little bit more damage until we get to endgame where we can get even better mods. So hopefully this was one of the most helpful episodes off the beginner guide thus far. Um, just make sure to... Be proactive with your inventory management on Warframe. Go ahead, go into the description and download that spreadsheet that I've made for you guys. And then, of course, edit it uh, any way you want to. If you are somebody who excels in Microsoft Excel or uh, Google Sheets or whatever, and you want to add a little bit of like uh, if statements and functions to it, by all means, go for it. I was just too lazy to do so. But uh, that should help you out whenever it comes to, you know, calculating how many sets you have of a certain Warframe or weapon, for example. Just, you know, anytime you get 
a new uh, prime part or blueprint or something like that, record it on the spreadsheet. Uh, so just have this open as you're playing the game. Warframe Nut Market works for all platforms. I can't remember if I said that in this video yet, but it does work for all platforms. So if you're on PS4, you can still use the spreadsheet, same for Xbox, uh, so on and so forth. So download the spreadsheet, record uh, how many prime sets you have of each weapon and Warframe and stuff like that. If you've been playing your Void Fisher missions, uh, get all of those corrupted and nightmare mods. Then also make sure to keep on crafting your format on a daily basis. Uh, keep on doing your night weave challenges if you can. Keep on leveling your Fortuna and your Plains of Eidolon reputation by doing bounties and farming resources there. And then I think that's it. Also, your syndicate standing. Yeah, that, that should be it. Make sure to be leveling up your syndicates. Uh, I'm one rank off getting the uh, Scattered Justice mod for the Hex, so I will probably have that by the time we get the Neptune. I would recommend getting that before you get the Neptune because... The thing that we have to do for credits is a little bit tough. And then, of course, we are getting closer to the end of the star chart, if that makes sense. So things are just going to get a little bit tougher from here on out. So make sure you get that Scattered Justice mod before we get the Neptune. But um, yeah, I think that is going to be it for this episode. If you guys have any questions in regards to trading or anything like that there, just leave them down in the comment section below. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe for more Warframe content. Again, thank you guys a ton for 289,000 subscribers. If we can get to 300k by the end of this month, that would mean the world to me. So again, thank you guys for helping me help you. Uh, like I said, subscribe for more Warframe content, and I will see you guys in the next video.